Hey, it's Patrick Regan here from Kintsugi Hope. Now, some people are like, what on earth does Kintsugi mean? So, Kintsugi is a Japanese word that means gold and joinery. So, when we get an object and we break it, we tend to mend it with superglue. And the whole idea of superglue is you hide the cracks, you pretend it's not broken. Uh, what they do in Japan is they put a gold powder in the glue, so instead of hiding the cracks, they make a feature of the cracks. Arguably, the object becomes more beautiful for being broken. It certainly becomes more unique. And I guess the thing about Kintsugi Hope is that we firmly believe that beauty comes from brokenness, that our scars are not to be ashamed of. Our scars make us who we are. Jesus, in his resurrected body, had scars. There'll be scars in heaven. Me and Diane, um, just over four videos, want to share with you some, uh, some encouragement around looking after your emotional mental health. We all have mental health in exactly the same way as we have physical health. And yet so often we're happy to talk about, you know, I've got a headache or uh, I've got a bad leg or got a bad back. But we don't talk about our mental health in the same way. And yet through this pandemic, that has to change. We need to start having much more honest conversation. We need to say it's OK not to be OK. One of my favourite verses in the Bible is Jeremiah 29, verse 11. It talks about the plans that God has for us to give us future, to give us hope, to give us destiny. And yet that is one of the most taken out of context verses in the whole of the Bible. It's a great fidget magnet and a T-shirt. But the reality is it is written to a people in exile. Uh, people who feel like they're hanging on. Um, they feel vulnerable. They feel orphaned. They feel forgotten about. And I appreciate at a moment in the events and in the creative arts industry, it can feel a little bit like that. And uh, and and what happens is, is uh, Hananiah comes along in Jeremiah 28 and says, guys, we've got hanging for two years. And you know what? It seemed a prophecy we could do that for two years. But then Jeremiah came along and went, I'm sorry, that's a false prophecy. It's going to be 70 years. And uh, but this time is not to be wasted. You need to build gardens. You need to settle down. You need to um, pray for this peace and prosperity of the city. I've got plans to prosper you and to give you hope in the midst of exile. I've got plans to give you hope and to give you a future. And so I hope that you see that these verses are actually more encouraging than what we thought. That in the middle of a desperate place that God is still with us. That acceptance and resignation are two different things. We have to get rid of the shoulds, the must, the oughts. I should be okay by now. What's wrong with me? I've got families to look after. I must pull myself together. I'm letting everyone down. I sort of know God loves me, but I, I, I'm struggling. I ought to be stronger. We need to accept it's okay not to be okay. It's okay to have limitations. Uh, life is never going to be perfect. You don't need to be all things to all people. You can have questions. You can't. You don't have to agree with everyone. Anxiety isn't weakness. Struggling doesn't mean you're a failure. It means you're a human being. Life is never going to be perfect. And remember this, you are loved no matter what. We need to develop resilient individuals. Uh, there, Martin Silman discovered that there are three things that stops people being resilient, that stops people's recovery, that stops people going forward. And they were simply this. Number one, personalization, that the belief that we are always at fault, that everything is our fault is not true. And so often the biggest critic in our lives is ourselves, is our inner critic. Self-compassion and self-indulgence are two different things. Self-compassion is talking to yourself the way that you would talk to your best friend. The second P, he said, was pervasiveness, the belief that an event will affect every area of your life. Now, listen, this has affected loads of our lives, massive parts of our lives. But you know what? You're still loved. You still have family here. I know some of us have lost people, but we've still got some family here and we can still um, do messages like this. We can still email. It's affected a massive part of our lives, but it hasn't affected all of our lives. And we can still choose how to respond. And thirdly, is permanence the belief that this will last forever hope is saying nothing lasts forever everything will pass so my prayer for you particularly in the creative arts industry is keep going keep believing except that this is a difficult time that you have to get through the people that got out of Auschwitz were not the optimists the optimists didn't last very long the people that got out of Auschwitz were the people who accepted the situation and adapted to it and realise that they couldn't take, they could take away everything, but they can't take away your attitude. So as we lament, as we cry out to God, as we um, 
start realizing that life is tough we know that god is with us in our emotional and mental health may god bless you